Awesome. Hello. Good morning. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Taylor Set. I am Taylor and I am here with Miss Eileen. We're here touching base on mental health awareness. So, of course, first, tell us about you. Awesome. Again, thank you so much for having me. Um, so I'm a I'm Aileen. I am a advocate for faith and mental health. Um, I am an author, speaker. Um, and when I say I advocate for faith and mental health, definitely specifically in the black community, because a lot of stigma happens there. Um, and I'm currently a doctoral student um, in the school psychology program at Nova Southeastern University. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> So what got you into this field or an advocate for both faith and mental health? Right. So initially, um, I wanted to go to medical school. I thought I was going to be a pediatrician until I started taking those science classes. <laughs> but, um, I realized um, even in my own personal life, um, more so for a self-disclosure, um, when I was 15, I was diagnosed with a rare autoimmune disorder. And I saw how, you know, the uncertainty of doctors thinking I had cancer and they couldn't figure out what was going on. I saw what it did to me mentally and also the people around me. Um, but we didn't talk about, you know, mental health and the importance of it. Um, so I saw myself getting into depression. And even at age 15, um, I did attempt suicide, you know, um, and I'm thankful that I didn't, you know, I thank God that it didn't um, go all the way through because I do have a purpose, but um, I think about now the people who are struggling, you know, with um, anxiety, depression in the um, black community, but also in the church community. So I really wanted to get into this field because there's not a lot of us that look like us. Um, and I just felt like I wanted to be a voice for the voiceless. Awesome, that was gonna be one of my questions. Do you think depression can cause a mental health or a mental breakdown? I know when people think mental health, they just think, oh, they're crazy or something in right. the brain. But do we right. also think that anxiety and depression can cause or play a role in a mental snap? Yeah, most definitely, um, because there's different types of depression. You know, there's situational where, you know, if you lose somebody, you lost you lost a job, um, you may feel depressed in that moment, but you don't stay that way. However, those who may go through staying in a very chaotic situation they might find themselves really staying in that state because when you don't talk about it and looking from a spiritual standpoint and mental health, when you're experiencing depression, you want to isolate yourself. The enemy likes isolation yeah. because it's like, okay, now I can manipulate you. I can do whatever I want because there's nobody around you. And so with speaking about it um, and advocating for people to speak up, you realize that you're not alone, you know? And so when it goes untreated or you overlook it, it's triggers in other parts of your life. So yes, um, depression is very common in, especially black people. And what can you say as an insider looking out can be some signs of mental health? Definitely, um, if you see someone again, isolating themselves, um, you see someone um, struggling to just get out of bed, you know, in the morning um, and you notice how they're talking, like they're feeling like they want to give up or they feel like they can't go on in life. Look at some risk factors in their life. Like, did they just lose a family member? Did they lose a job? You know, what's their social support system look like? You know, um, are they a loner? You know, so different things like that. Um, some people even try to, you know, sell some of their things, you know, if they know that they don't want to live anymore. So just looking at things that are, that you find unusual, and sometimes go with your gut feeling, you know, your intuition, like, uh, this doesn't look right. So let me check on this person. And that can also go for those who are overly happy. Because I know a lot of times those yeah. signs are the signs. Right. But when we look at uh, famous people or even people in your own yeah. life that you will say, well, wait a minute, she's or he was always smiling. They right. had everything. Right. How could we kind of pick that out from those happy-go-lucky people? Right. So that's something you have to also um, realize is that when someone, you find someone's always too happy all the time, um, it's like, is it how they really are or is something going on? And especially if you know that person um, and they, you know that they just recently experienced something, a lot of times people try to hide how they're really feeling by trying to make other people happy. So just really checking on that person, asking, how are you, like, what's going on? And sometimes people are afraid to open up. So just telling them that, you know, 
it may feel uncomfortable for you right now to talk to me, but just know I'm here to listen. I'm here to just help you through whatever you're experiencing. Just allowing somebody to know that you're there makes a difference. That's really good. And how can we handle it without fearing the resentment of others? When you say resentment, more so like if you're, can you elaborate a little bit on that when you say resentment? Like I'm going through something and instead of trying, to, I'm trying to not make you feel bad or get rid of you. Cause you know, a lot of times they say, oh, you're too down or get over it. Especially for us, a lot of us folks like to just say, oh, get over it, it's not that bad or, or death always happened or always oh, just a grade. So right. how can we try to let ourselves be freely or transparent with someone without resenting or without feeling that resentment? or fearing that resentment from other people. Right, so you just said a couple of phrases that we should shy away from or stay away <laughs> from. When, you know, um, a lot of people die or, you know, get over it, like you're strong. Those words causes people to feel as if, you know, you're not validating how they're feeling, right? So um, in reality, some people may end up, you know, shying away or resenting you for saying that and even shut down. So more so just, when somebody is not in a place where they want to speak to you, they may say something like that. And you, we as a person who's not experiencing that have to understand that, okay, they're experiencing this. But again, it's more so saying, hey, you know, I know you may not want to talk right now, but just know I'm here. I'm, I have that listening ear. I'm, if you need me, I'm here. You know, it's just reassuring them that, you know, you're here no matter if they want to talk right now or if they do want to talk. Because some people are not looking for a solution or a fixer. They're looking for someone just to be there to just listen to them. And do you think patients can get cured from mental illness? <laughs> this is tricky. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, okay. So, there's a lot of mental illness that are out there that with medication, yes. Um, and I do believe in God as being a healer. I will say that because in my own personal life, again, going back to the autoimmune disorder and everything, doctors told me that I wouldn't be cured from it. I would have all these symptoms, but God, but man is not God and God had the final say. So yes, God can always heal, but I also believe in the power of checking in with your doctor, you know, cause mental illness is like a taboo from <laughs> some, um, but taking your medication can help more so of those extreme mental illnesses that are out there. Um, however, again, it goes back to depression and anxiety sometimes being situational for people, especially in what they're experiencing. Um, so it's, it's a case by case situation. I can't say in general, like everybody can be cured. It's always a case by case situation. And what are your daily mental health exercise? Something you do to keep your mind in check. Right. I am an advocate also for self-care. Like, listen, <laughs> I am big on like, once I get home, cause I work with patients all the time and I'm from the, well, let me go back. In the morning, my phone is like off or I don't talk to people cause I'm in worship. I have to start my morning with worship and prayer, get my mind right. But when I get home, it's also the same thing. I take an hour to myself, um, reading a book that I love, Netflix, um, working out I've gotten really into working out lately and I've noticed the change in just my attitude my stress level going down so just finding something that I love and I do it every day yeah I know you speak a lot about faith in God because the next one was going to be what is your spiritual view on mental health because we all know us Christians like to say just pray on it just pray on it right. and the fact that you did bring up getting help or taking your medicine yeah. so that it's kind of the question you answered it with the, what is your right. spiritual views on mental health? Yeah. So you do believe in prayer and a psychologist if needed. Yes, and a psychiatrist if needed. <laughs> so, because um, I, I always tell people, you know, God tells us that, um, you know, our body is a temple, right? And that includes our mind too. So if we're, we're always advocating for us to be physically fit, to do the work of God, but you have to be mentally fit too, right? And so when we are praying and believing God for deliverance and healing from diabetes, cholesterol, people are still taking medications. They're still mm -hmm. going to their doctors. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way with mental health. Um, it's not saying that, oh, you're crazy or you can't live a normal life. 
But if you stay away from going to the doctors or taking the necessary medication, you're going to find yourself increasing the risk of doing extreme behaviors that are negative. Um, you won't be able to function. So I am a strong believer in God is a healer and deliverance. I'm, I'm Bible based. I love the Bible, but I'm also big on getting the right help because the Bible also talks about wise counsel. So why not, you know, use that? Um, because there's Christian psychiatrists out there. There's Christian psychologists, Christian counselors out there to help you through that process. Um, but we have to be wanting to get the help first. Awesome. And out of everything out of this, what is something you would like to leave us? If we don't remember anything else, what is something you'd like to leave on us to remember? Definitely, I want to leave with, you know, it's okay not to be okay, but you don't have to stay there. Um, you know, and you're not alone in what you're experiencing and that um, speaking up will save not only your life, but somebody else. And I do want to leave um, some, you know, resources. The There's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. I always give those people, um, anyone that number. It's the 1-800-273-8255. And that number is not only for if you want if you find yourself or know somebody wanting to attempt suicide, but this is more so anybody who needs some type of service or resource in their community, um, in their state, it's a national number open 24 seven. And that, you know, um, mental health, I, for me, I love it. Um, I feel like we should always try to be an advocate for it um, because again, it can save a life. Awesome. And as watching your page, I think you're, Oh, you are a great advocate for mental health. I go through it. I listen to your things. You drop great gems that I was stealing. So <laughs> I want you. to tell the people how they can reach you. Because a lot of times we need someone like us or someone transparent or someone younger. Because, you know, it depends on their preference to say, you know what? I can just call her up and say, well, X, Y, Z is happening. Because you sound like a great show to lean on. Tell me wrong. <laughs> but okay. I want them to know how to reach you. Right. So you can find me on um, social media. I'm on Instagram um, at Aileen, A-L-I-N-E-J, Milfort, M-I-L-F-O-R-T. And you can also find me on Facebook at Aileen Milfort as well. And give us some of the titles of your books. Yeah. So I wrote two books. Um, the first one was Tears Turned Into Purpose. And the other one is While Waiting for the Promise. So those both are Christian self-help books, but Tears Turned to, Into Purpose is the book that I talk about my testimony of being healed, um, different topics such as um, knowing healthy friends um, while waiting for the promise is talking about things to do when you are waiting for God to answer that promise that he promised you. And can we find the word to purchase it on your page? Yes. Well, you can also go on my website. I forgot to mention my website, um, <laughs> www.aileenjmilfort.com. You can find both of my books there, or you can find them on amazon.com. And are you still selling shirts? You I know, that's I'm not sure I purchased yeah. something. I don't know if you're still doing it or not, so I ain't want to put it you on. Know, it's so funny you say that because I do have some products coming out. Um, <laughs> that I'm working on, um, including another shirt, but the ones I had before, I'm no longer selling those, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I do have a shirt coming out and some products. So uh -huh. stay tuned. Uh -huh. Well, thank yeah. you guys. Um, definitely look her up. You said Aileen J. Milford. Yep. Dot com to get her product, her book. I have a book and it's really, really good. And I don't read it. So the fact that I read it all, <laughs> it tells you it's great. Follow her page, even if you don't want to come out yourself, but things she drop on definitely is like a little seed to put to us. Thank you again, Miss Ailey, for joining me. I really, really appreciate this. I'm happy I was able to do this Zoom. So it was perfect. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. You have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. you. Weekday. It's Sunday. <laughs> Enjoy your week. Thank you. Thank you.